Oh, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to Steph AB TV. Welcome to the Audi e-tron Sportback S. Now in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what my experience has been like living with this car for a week. I'm gonna talk about the car, but I'm also gonna talk about the charging experience and the living with experience when you're trying to find charge networks. And well, let's just say that you're gonna see me relatively animated in certain parts of the video. And for that, I apologize. So let's start talking about the car first before we get into the meat of the video per se. So what we have here, we have a 503 PS Audi e-tron Sportback S, or I guess what it is in, in electric money, it's 370 kilowatt in terms of battery power. What this will mean is it will give you an acceleration in non-boost mode of uh, 0 to 62 in 5.1 seconds. With boost mode, it will do 4.5 seconds to 62, which in itself is a pretty good achievement because this thing weighs 2.6 tons. It's a heavy old barge, this thing, and I'll talk about more about how this thing handles when we take it out on the road. Top speed on the e-tron Sportback S is 130 miles per hour and will get a range of approximately 233 according to Audi. However, in reality, it's closer to 200. In terms of pricing, this car comes in at 87,000 pounds base. However, with the option that it's got, it comes in at 96,000. That includes things such as the Matrix headlights, which are 3,100 pounds, the Comfort and Sound Pack, which is 1,900 pounds, and the panoramic roof, which is 1,400 pounds. We also have a four wheel drive platform powering this thing with a single gear transmission. And of course, to keep this thing on the road, we get 21 inch wheels. They are mahoosive. But what I like about the e-tron is it doesn't try to be something it's not, if that makes sense. It's, it's kind of kept pure with its kind of Audi lines. The styling is very, very elegant. It's very, very nice. It's a very kind of premium luxury vehicle. Um, and what I love about it the most is that you look at this and the design language is so Audi. It's not like something that say BMW have delivered in the form of the i iX4 or the i4X. I don't know, that thing that looks, it looks hideous from the front. It just, it's trying to be too futuristic. Whereas this, it just does the job. Right, as we get inside the Audi e-tron Sportback S, it's a very familiar feel. We have a very nice, Audi inspired, well, interior, what we see on most of Audi's cars. One of the things that you'll notice is we get this kind of these very nice kind of gray, rotor gray seats, the S-line seats, which are extremely comfortable. We get the flat bottom steering wheel, which we're used to seeing in models such as RS6, A6, etc. Um, it is nice, it feels very, very familiar. Um, the other thing which I quite like about this car as well is that it gives you some additional features, particularly in the form of the sat-nav. And obviously we're in the world of EV and charging. So one of the things that you'll wanna be able to check is where your nearest chargers are, including your medium range chargers, your high power superchargers, etc. And the Audi sat-nav has that all built in, which is very clever and very useful. Now, there are a few things I don't like about this car. Um, one of them is this center section. I, I really don't get it. Um, this big kind of gear sticky thing, which actually doesn't really make too much sense for me. I think it's kind of given you, I don't know, it's there for style and design, but I think it's wasted space. Um, I think something much smaller would have been better and you could replace this bit with something more of more substance. I don't like this. It feels like something's missing. Whilst you get things such as wireless charging, uh, Apple CarPlay, wireless CarPlay, cup holders, etc., I do feel that this part of the car lets it down a bit. I just, I don't know, I just don't really like that. Of course, you've got the, du the dual screens with the kind of, is it called haptic, haptic thing where you touch it and it makes a click like, like that um, but the the other one as well is the one down here below as well so you've got the climate control is managed by the screen down below um, which is a little bit fiddly if you're on the move if i'm honest with you because there's no buttons which is a shame but other than that seats are extremely comfortable as you would expect the ride as we're going to find out is also extremely comfortable the fit and finish inside the e-tron sportback s is second to none it's it's very premium and it's what you'd expect for a car that costs ninety six thousand pounds this is where this part gets interesting because before we take it for a drive i want to share with you um a bit of raw footage that happened yesterday when i was supposed to charge this car for the review um, so i'm going to cut to yesterday uh, excuse my uh animated self and uh, i will then join you on the drive all right, so I'm recording this bit on the iPhone because I want you guys to know my genuine reaction to living with an EV. 
I am flipping pissed. I'm so pissed off. So I've literally, so just to put it into perspective, this is this is this current state of affairs. So I plugged the car in. So this morning when I got to work, I had uh, 30, sorry, 41 miles worth of range. So I thought, well, I can't film a video with 40 miles of range. So it's going to deplete itself extremely quickly. So I plugged it on charge, put it on charge for six hours. I'm flipping sweating as well. I put it on charge for six hours um, and we got... Uh, what did I get to? I got to 131 miles in six hours, which I thought, okay, do you know what? That's manageable. Let me just go and top it up at an Ionity charge. You know, the fast chargers, the 350 kilowatt chargers that um, will do 20% to 80% in a little less than half an hour. I thought, you know, that'll keep me going until the car has to go home. Uh, sorry, go back to the press garage. And, and okay, so I've got to this ionity place first of all two out of the four chargers are unavailable which is a complete piss take i've queued for 35 minutes to use this flipping charger and then i try and plug it in and it doesn't flip in work it doesn't authorize i can't really use it so i'm now stuck here in a roasting car should just really turn the ac on but i've now stuck here so i literally got no additional charge i've still got 114 miles left and Really, I'm going to go home now, put this on charge overnight and film the rest of this review tomorrow. Because oh, it's, it's, just so, it's so infuriating. It's so annoying. Put it into perspective. If I needed petrol, all I would need to do is go to a flipping petrol station, fill my car up with petrol, take all of five minutes, and then I'm fully stocked. I'm good to go. Petrol stations everywhere. EV network is just not there yet. So I've just got the car home. And there was one other thing which I really forgot to mention, which I think is actually really important. My normal journey back home from work is about 25, 30 minutes. Uh, and I just take a set route all the time. Having this EV, having to go and search for this Ionity supercharger meant I had to go on the M25 and the M40. M25 was chock a block with traffic. So, so it, it, it really, it's, it's really disrupted my way of transport, which actually is actually, it's, it's a really important thing. And I don't think it's talked about enough. Everyone raves about EVs and don't get me wrong. This is where I need to be really clear because this car, I really like the car. You know, the car is great, but that car comes with the experience. And if the experience is dog, then it puts a sour taste in your mouth because it's like, look, the good example is, you got a really nice house in a really crap area. When you're in the house, all is good, but you still have to get out and take, you know, go for a walk in this crap area. And it just, it doesn't leave you fully fulfilled because part of the experience is ruined. The same thing with this. Whilst this car is really cool, I like the car. It's a great design. The EV experience for me, having this car and living with it for a week, is it hasn't been great. So, if we take my uh, audacious ordeal of EV networks, and I've got to be clear that there's nothing really wrong with electric cars. That's not the issue. It's the network itself, which is the issue. But as you can see from the previous segment of my video, it really infuriated me. But anyway, that's my honest thoughts on the network. What about the car? What about this, the Audi e-tron Sportback S? Look. As I said earlier on, design-wise, I think this looks really, really nice. It's a very, very nice-looking car. I'm going to get the acceleration out of the way because, well, we all need to see what the acceleration is. It's 5.10 to 62 in normal mode. I'm going to put it into boost mode now, which is sport, uh, and that will increase the uh, performance of about 110% of the battery power, giving us 4.5 seconds. There it is and that's quick and you do feel that and do you know what as time goes on i'm getting completely desensitized by the lack of sound i think evs have got their own thing going and yes they don't have the sound but equally for cars like this sound is very much a secondary option it's a secondary thing you don't necessarily think about the sound in this i'm going to put it back into kind of comfort the other great thing with this is you've got kind of different driving modes as well. You've got the kind of comfort efficiency mode, you've got the dynamic, and all of those modes kind of behave slightly differently. Dynamic mode, it drops the car's ride height because this does have what feels like it has suspension. So in dynamic, the suspension is a little bit harsher. In comfort, the ride is higher. The car feels very cumbersome. You know, it, it, it doesn't do the greatest job at hiding its weight, particularly when you kind of throw it around the corners. 
But equally, the, that's the kind of the compromise for extreme luxury and extreme comfort. I mean, if I throw it around, you know, yes, you can ping it around a corner, but you do know you're driving a 2.6 ton vehicle. The same thing is said about the brakes because whilst it's got big brakes kind of encapsulated within that 21 inch wheel, you do have to stamp on the brakes to really get the most out of it. Now, in terms of how it is to dry, it's, as I said, it's cumbersome, it's heavy, but it's really nice. It really is, it's a very nice cruiser. And, and actually, you know, being a kind of SUV, I see it nice and high. Now, of course, powering this kind of car, you get the uh, the single gear motor. Uh, in cars like the e RS e-tron GT and the uh, Taycan, you get the dual gear, which kind of gives you that extra oomph when you get up to speed. Whereas with this, it's just that constant kind of progressive feel, which as you start to increase in speed, you kind of feel that power letting off. It kind of starts to run out of a bit of steam. That low down torque is immense. It's just brilliant. But as you start to get to the higher speeds, you do, you do feel a little, I wouldn't say it's called battery sag, that's not the right thing, but you do feel it kind of loses a little bit of its kind of performance. Uh, but then it is trying to shift 2.6 tons around. The suspension is so comfortable, you know. What, like I said, the compromise of having such a heavy car uh, and such a kind of soft suspension to give you the comfort, it's just, it's brilliant. It really is extremely comfortable, super comfy. Your passenger's gonna absolutely love it. The car itself is huge, it's a massive thing. Rear space in the car is completely huge. You've got a massive boot in this thing. Your rear passengers, actually, even though you've got a kind of slanted roof, um, I still feel that your rear passengers have got plenty of space in the back. Of course, with the extra optional extra of the panoramic sunroof, um, it gives a lot more light into this car, which actually is a really nice thing. The steering itself feels a little bit light. It feels a little bit wafty, uh, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, but again, that's not, you know, this car isn't out there to be a, a super performance uh, EV. This is in that luxury, premium, automotive, electric market sector. The interior cabin noise, there is nothing. It is absolutely nothing. It's so well insulated. You wouldn't expect anything less from Audi. The final thing I want to talk about before I end the video is it does have a very clever way of using the uh, auto regen function, which actually I quite like in this car. Um, you've got the paddles here. Um, if you know if you flick the paddle down, it kind of helps with your braking. It gives you two stages of regen. But actually, what's really good about this car is it uses the Audi PreSense, which is kind of your you know your emergency braking system, to gauge the distance from the car in front. And if it sees that you're actually starting to close in on the car, it will auto regen for you, it'll auto brake for you. But if you don't have a car in front, it will let the car coast to give you as much range as possible. Which, which is a nice touch because so many of these cars with auto regen they have it permanently on and it becomes quite disruptive in the drive and you have to learn to drive it differently but the audi e-tron sportback s s is um it's pretty good i like it do i love it i don't love it i love its design um i think it's a really good step forward for audi i prefer this to the look of the normal e-tron and yeah i think that's a kind of quick first drive of, of this audi e-tron uh, s uh, sportback s